Hello, this is Crystal Stanich, and thank you for joining me for this week's First Chapter Friday. Today, I will be reading from the beginning of Jojo Moyes, The Giver of Stars. Prologue. December 20th, 1937. Listen. Three miles deep in the forest just below Arnett's Ridge, and you're in silence, so dense, it's like you're wading through it. There's no bird song passed on, not even in high summer, and especially not now, with the chill air so thick with moisture that it stills those few leaves clinging gamely to the branches. Among the oak and hickory, nothing stirs. Wild animals are deep underground. Soft pelts intertwined in narrow caves or hollowed out trunks. The snow is so deep, the mule's legs disappear up to his hocks. And every few strides, he staggers and snorts suspiciously, checking for loose flints and holes under the endless white. Only the narrow creek below moves confidently, its clear water murmuring and bubbling over the stony bed, headed down toward an endpoint nobody around here has ever seen. Marjorie O'Hare tests her toes inside her boots, but feeling went a long time back, and she winces at the thought of how they're going to hurt when they warm up again. Three pairs of wool stockings, and in this weather, you might as well go bare-legged. She strokes the big mule's neck, brushing off the crystals, forming on his dense coat with her heavy men's gloves. Extra food for you tonight, Charlie boy, she says, and watches as his huge ears flick back. She shifts, adjusting the saddlebags making sure the mule is balanced as they pick their way down toward the creek. Hot molasses in your supper. Might even have some myself. Four more miles, she thinks, wishing she had eaten more breakfast. Past the Indian escarpment, up the yellow pine track. Two more hollers, and old Nancy will appear, singing hymns as she always does her clear, strong voice echoing through the forest as she walks, arms swinging like a child's to meet her. You don't have to walk five miles to meet me, she tells the woman every fortnight. That's our job. That's why we're on horseback. Oh, you girls do enough. She knows the real reason. Nancy, like her bedbound sister Jean, back in the tiny log cabin at Redlick, cannot countenance even a chance that she will miss the next tranche of stories. She's 64 years old with three good teeth and a sucker for a handsome cowboy. That Mac McGuire, he makes my heart flutter like a clean sheet on a long line. She clasps her hands and lifts her eyes to heaven. The way Archer writes him, well, it's like he steps right out of the pages in that book and swings me onto his horse with him. And if you would like to know what happens next, please feel free to check out this book on the Libby app. We also have it here at the library. Join me here next Friday as I read from Leon Moriarty's Apples Never Fall. Thank you and have a great week.